Hold on one second, okay? Please, I don't know who else is sliding. I know, I know, ma'am. Just stay on the phone with me, okay? My whole family, there's 30 people, 25 people. I know, I know. It's okay, the officers are there. They're trying to get to you guys, okay? Hello, welcome to the little shop of crime, curators and purveyors of all things macabre and mysterious. My name is Steve and I'm new here, but I will be offering both solved and unsolved cases on a weekly basis. So if, like me, you have a fascination with true crime, then please consider subscribing so we can stay in touch. Today's case is pretty mental. It's all about revenge and one man whose life begins to fall apart until he becomes a melting pot of rage that would explode with tragic consequences. It's a story of just how far one man is capable of going when he's driven to breaking point, made all the more tragic in that it happens on Christmas Eve. Buckle up, this is the Kavina Massacre. Today we fly out to Los Angeles, California, on the west coast of the United States. LA, home to the rich and famous, known for its year-round warmth, palm trees, golden beaches and, of course, Hollywood. The quiet suburb of Mentros, 15 miles north of downtown LA, borders the Angeles National Forest and in January 2006 was home to Bruce Pardo, who was 42 at the time, and his 40-year-old wife, Sylvia. Things could look hardly more idyllic for the couple. Having met two years earlier, they had just married, had a combined income of around $150,000, and a home worth half a million, which they shared with their beloved dog, Saki. But it didn't last long. By December 2007, less than two years after they wed, Sylvia was sleeping in a separate room and spending weekends with her parents. And just two months later, she told him she wanted a divorce. Now, according to court documents, Sylvia suggested that during the relationship, Bruce demanded that she take care of her own three children with her own finances. And he was also reluctant to get a joint bank account suggesting that both financial and commitment issues played a large role in driving the couple apart. Another significant factor in the breakdown of their marriage was cited to be Sylvia's discovery that Bruce had a secret son. Matthew was nine years old, and he had suffered severe brain damage as a toddler back in 2001 after he fell into a backyard pool while he was alone with Bruce. Following the accident, Pardo refused to pay the escalating medical fees, and so Elena Luciano, his girlfriend at the time, sued him for costs reaching $340,000. Luciano obtained money from Bruce's $100,000 homeowner insurance policy, and around $36,000 was put into a trust fund for Matthew, who now requires constant care. Bruce Pardo never contributed any more money to his son, nor did he ever see him again. But despite this fact, he was still claiming him as a dependent for tax purposes, something neither Sylvia nor Elena were aware of. So with their marriage having faltered pretty early on, things very quickly descended into a bitter feud between Bruce Pardo and his wife, and Sylvia filed court papers asking for attorney fees and over $3,000 per month in spousal support. She also insinuated that he reduced their $90,000 in savings down to $17,000 in just two months, suggesting that he was squirrelling their money away into some private account. Now I know this is all getting a little bit numbery, but it is all relevant. In June 2008, a divorce court ordered that Bruce pay his wife $1,785 per month in spousal support. And during the divorce proceedings, Bruce confided to his friend that his wife was, in his words, taking him to the cleaners. And to make matters worse, just one month later, in July, Bruce was fired from his job as an electrical engineer for billing false hours. And so the court 
suspended his payments due to job hardship. Now, according to court documents, Bruce got to keep the house, but was forced to pay Sylvia $10,000 as part of the divorce settlement, as well as returning her valuable diamond ring, and she was also given full custody of the family dog, something which enraged her husband. In a court declaration, he claimed that Sylvia was living with her parents rent-free, had been spending lavishly on gambling trips to Las Vegas, a luxury car, meals at upmarket restaurants, massages, and even golf lessons. Basically, their marriage was just a big old bitter mess by this point, and the anger, frustration, defeat, and bitter rage began to fester inside Bruce Pardo, and police reports confirm that his divorce was settled on the 18th of December, which was just six days before the incident. And just two days before it, he told his lawyer that he was still trying to find the divorce settlement money. So he had mounting debts, he'd lost his wife, and then his job, and even his beloved dog. And eventually he just... Now the story takes us to Covina, which is a quiet suburb just 22 miles east of downtown LA, and to a neighbourhood whose residents were mainly retirees and elderly people. And it was a family tradition for there to be a Christmas party every year at Sylvia's parents there in Covina. Here they are pictured with their five children, including Sylvia. And every year a neighbour would knock at their door dressed as Santa. And Pardo seemingly used this to disguise himself so he could gain entry into the home. And on Christmas Eve 2008, at 11.30pm, Pardo knocked on the door of his former in-law's house, where Sylvia Pardo and 25 of her friends and family were enjoying the party that was by now in full swing. He was dressed in a full Santa outfit, which was concealing four semi-automatic handguns, and he was carrying a large gift-wrapped box. The door was opened by Pardo's eight-year-old niece Katrina, who was the daughter of Sylvia's sister Letitia. She had opened the door surprised and excited to see Santa carrying a large present. Then he shot her in the face at point-blank range. Pardo then stepped inside and began firing indiscriminately at the guests, who immediately tried to hide or escape by jumping out of windows and running upstairs, and Pardo just shot at them as they attempted to flee. He also executed those trying to hide behind furniture and underneath the dining room table. At this point, a neighbour saw a teenage boy running from the house, shouting, They shot my family. Once he was done with the shootings, Pardo unwrapped the present he was carrying, revealing a homemade gas dispenser. He then used the device to spray the inside of the home with a combustible vapour consisting of high-octane racing fuel and compressed air, which hit an open flame and almost immediately engulfed the building as well as Bruce Pardo himself. At this point, witnesses saw people jumping from second floor windows in order to escape the gunfire and rapidly growing flames, which burned so intensely that they reached 40 to 50 feet in height and took 80 firefighters an hour and a half to extinguish. It was so bad that the top floor of the house even collapsed onto the bottom floor. And due to the intensity of the blaze, bodies were so badly burnt that they could only be identified through dental and medical records. The operation to put out the flames was hampered at first because firefighters were held back by police due to the sound of gunshots still being fired inside the house, though it was later speculated that this is likely to have been unspent ammunition burning in the blaze. It was only after the fire had been fully extinguished that police and firefighters could confirm how many of the families missing were dead. A total of nine people were killed, either by shooting or by the fire. Three people were also injured in the attack. A 16-year-old girl who was shot and wounded in her back. A woman who broke her ankle from jumping out of a second floor window to escape. And Pardo's niece who answered the door and was shot in the face. Yes, by some miracle she managed to survive the attack with obviously severe but not life-threatening injuries. Her mother, who also survived the attack, ran to a neighbour's house to call the police. He's, he's, who is he to you? He is, he was, he's my ex-brother-in-law, he's 
they're going to this right now. Okay. With my sister. Hold on one second, okay? Please, I don't know who else is alive. I know, I know, ma'am. Just stay on the phone with me, okay? My whole family, there's 30 people, 25 people. I know, I know. It's okay. The officers are there. They're trying to get to you guys, okay? He came in through the entrance of the door, and there's a Santa Claus suit, and I didn't see them. When he shot, I heard the shots, and we, they were like poppers, and I wasn't sure what it was, so we all, everyone started panicking and running, so we all dove under the dining room. Some of us dove, some of us left. I don't know. My mom's house is on the Ma'am, ma the fire department's there, okay? What's he wearing? Ma what is he wearing? Please. What is he wearing? Please tell me. My nephew, what is he wearing now? He changed his clothes from Santa Claus clothes. Okay, let me know what he's wearing. Black clothes. All he's black? He's on neighbor's doors. Bruce Pardo killed a total of nine members of Sylvia's family, including herself. At least three victims' deaths were caused by gunshot wounds alone, four others died from a combination of gunshot wounds and the fire, and two deaths stemmed from the fire alone. The victims were Sylvia Pardo, Bruce's wife, her mother Alicia, her father Joseph, her brother Charles and his wife Sherry, her brother James, and his wife Teresa, and her sister Alicia, and her 17-year-old son Michael. Leticia, who we heard making the 911 call earlier, was the only Ortega sibling to survive. After the attack, Pardo changed into his normal clothes and drove to his brother's house, which was 30 miles away in Silmar. Bruce's brother Brad had actually been out to a Christmas party himself that evening, and he returned home to find his brother. He was dead. The police were called immediately, and on Christmas Day they removed Bruce Pardo's body. He was killed from a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head. But Bruce Pardo wasn't finished yet. In an attempt at one final act of devastation from beyond the grave, Pardo had booby-trapped his rented 2008 Dodge Caliber using remnants of his Santa costume rigged to a homemade firebomb consisting of around 500 rounds of ammunition as well as a boatload of gunpowder. Luckily, it was spotted and the bomb squad were called. They threw an incendiary device into the car which triggered the trap engulfing the vehicle in flames but thankfully nobody was hurt. It doesn't seem as though suicide was part of Bruce Pardo's original plan though. He had purchased a ticket for an early Christmas morning flight from LA to Canada, and he was found with $17,000 in cash strapped to his leg. It is strongly speculated that his change of plan was due to severe third degree burns all over his body, in particular to his arms and legs. Police even described how parts of the Santa suit were actually fused to his skin. Ooh. While searching his Mentros home, police evacuated the surrounding houses in case he'd left a bomb there too. Inside his home, they found several 13-round handguns, as well as over 200 rounds of ammunition, empty handgun and ammo boxes, two high-powered shotguns, and a supply of racing fuel, as well as this container for high-octane fuel. They also found a box for the compressor used in the homemade flamethrower, the likes of which the fire department admitted they had never seen before. He had crafted it using his expert knowledge gained through his previous work in the aerospace industry. It was later also revealed that Bruce Pardo had an even longer hit list than previously thought. A second car was found close to Sylvia's divorce lawyer's home, and it contained maps, clothes and a fuel tank, but he never made it there, obviously choosing to kill himself instead. And he even plotted to kill his own mother due to her sympathy towards Sylvia during the divorce proceedings. She had actually been invited to the party as well, but stayed home because she was feeling unwell. She later requested that the $17,000 found on her son, along with any money raised from the sale of his estate, to be left in a fund for Sylvia's children. But what about the other survivors of the attack? Well, Letitia now writes a blog at letitiashope.com, where she discusses surviving the tragedy, as well as exploring hope and family. It's actually really inspiring considering what she's been through. I'll leave a link below in case you want to check it out. 
and her daughter Katrina, who was the eight-year-old who was shot in the face, having now made a full recovery and grown up, campaigns against gun violence and advocates for changes in weapons laws. Bruce Pardo had no criminal convictions and no history of violence, and his shocked friends said nothing indicated that he was on the verge of a murderous rampage. He'd even made plans with friends for the Christmas period and beyond. The head usher at his church even said of him, he was the nicest guy you could imagine, always a pleasure to talk to, always a big smile. Neighbours described him as very nice and sociable and someone who always decorated his home for the holidays. And another neighbour said that when he encountered Pardo in his yard just two hours before the attack, that he seemed normal and even wished him a Merry Christmas. So how could this seemingly normal man wipe out nine members of an innocent family, who were very much loved and admired by their neighbours and their local community? He left 13 young orphans. This case leaves so many questions unanswered when trying to make sense of a senseless act. Was he a monster in disguise? Or did the pressure and breakdown of his marriage, the mounting debt and the cocktail of hatred and rage make a monster from an ordinary man? Maybe it was a bit of both? Either way, nothing could possibly justify his actions. Thank you so much for watching. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this case in the comments below. I promise I will try to read all of them. And if you found this case interesting, it would mean the world to me if you liked the video and even considered subscribing. Thanks again. Don't be a stranger.